Hey guys, Heidi Preeb here. This week we are doing short videos on signs that you are starting to heal from each of the attachment styles. So I'm going to talk about three signs today that will show up pretty early on in the attachment healing journey that aren't necessarily going to be the end goal, but that indicate to you you're probably on the right path in the healing process. So today we are talking about the avoidant attachment style. Sign number one, and I think this is the clearest one that tends to come up for avoidance who begin the attachment healing journey, is that you are starting to see your somatic and emotional experiences as valuable data that it's worth integrating and considering. So many avoidance when they look at doing the attachment healing work, I have seen kind of a consistent theme of them being worried that becoming aware of and prioritizing their emotional experiences means that they will be dysregulated all of the time and that they won't be able to control their emotions. And this is absolutely not the way it works, okay? So when you start to become aware of what's going on for you in your body and how emotions are showing up in your body, it gives you a choice about what you want to do about those emotions. When you repress them and when you shove them into areas areas of your consciousness that you never really visit, it does not give you much of an opportunity to change the way that you're feeling. But when you start to welcome those feelings into your conscious awareness, consider what they might be telling you about your life, then you're able to consciously work with them in a way that actually makes you more emotionally regulated rather than less. So this is not about following every whim that you feel. It's not about throwing logic out the window. It's about recognizing that your emotions are usually bringing things to your awareness that it might be worth factoring into your decision-making. So it's actually just a process of having more data than you had before. Because a lot of the time when we leave emotional data out of decision-making, we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot because we might find ourselves suddenly really burnt out, really exhausted, really unable to continue down the road that we planned to go down because we didn't consider the emotional impact it would have on us to go down that road. And this is where a lot of stress and a lot of burnout comes from. So an early sign that the healing process is starting to happen is just that more often than not, you're becoming aware of those emotions as they arise in your body and you're able to stop, name them, take them seriously as data points and factor them into the decisions you make without believing yourself to be completely irrational and dysregulated for doing so. Sign number two that you're starting to heal from the avoidant attachment style is that you're starting to see your past and current vulnerabilities for what they are. So a key part of the avoidant patterning is actually around idealization. So when you talk to avoidance about their childhood, many of them will tell you it was perfectly normal, nothing went wrong, my parents were great all the time, and they can struggle to understand that even the most well-intended parents, even the most well-intended caregivers make mistakes and that those mistakes can affect their development in a negative way. But part of that avoidant patterning involves glossing over things that went wrong and convincing themselves that unless there was a real, intense, tangible consequence to the things that happened, the things that happened were all benign. So another key part of the avoidant mindset is really hating anyone who they perceive to be playing the victim because the avoidant never lets themselves play the victim. They take radical self-responsibility to the extreme, and in many cases, they're actually completely unable to recognize the areas in which they're already vulnerable or where in the past they should have been protected but weren't. So a key sign that you're starting to heal from this attachment style is that you're finally able to recognize the situations in which you were vulnerable in your early life, in which you did need care and protection and support, but were not given it, whether that care and support was practical or emotional in nature, and both matter. And this doesn't mean that you can't look at the past in a balanced way. It doesn't mean that you can't see why things happened the way that they did. It just means that you can hold two conflicting things in your mind at once and recognize both. Someone may have wanted things to be different for me. However, it still left me vulnerable and unprotected, even though the person who was trying to protect me had good intentions. And in some cases that was not the case, right? And so this part of the process for some people might involve recognizing ways in which you were abused or neglected as a child or adult. But again, a really key sign that you're starting the healing process with an avoidant attachment style is that you're starting to be able to recognize your own victimhood and your own vulnerability, both past and present, regardless of any logical explanations you may have about why they happened the way that they did. So you're able to recognize impact regardless of circumstance. Sign number three that you're starting to heal from the avoidant attachment style is that you're able to recognize other people's pain as valid and real, even if 
you don't agree with the reasoning behind it. So part of having an avoidant attachment style is the worldview, I'm okay, you're not okay. So the avoidantly attached person had to learn very early on through the process of operant conditioning how to self-regulate. So if you are not given the skills to co-regulate when you are young, you learn to do it yourself, albeit not as well as you would have learned to do it if you were securely attached. So what that means is that adults using an avoidant attachment strategy can have a little bit of an ego around being highly proficient at keeping their own emotions in check, and they might have a lot of judgment about others who do not or cannot do the same. Now, this is interesting because in order to be frustrated with other people, you have to be, to a certain extent, projecting onto them, right? Otherwise, unless someone's dysregulation truly was inescapable for you, you were trapped in a room with them and couldn't get out, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be highly frustrated and activated around someone else choosing to behave in a way that you would not choose to behave in. The secure response would be to go, oh, something different is going on for that person than what's going on for me, and so probably I don't understand what they're going through and I can either learn a little bit more about it or I can just choose to not engage with it. But with avoidant spectrum types, they often get personally offended on some level when they see other people displaying vulnerability and need in ways that they were never allowed to display those things. And that's a key sign that you have an unhealed avoidant attachment style, is feeling consistently triggered by those who you believe are playing the victim. Because again, that's a role that you were never allowed to play and that you may have compensated for by deciding that everything was your fault and taking radical responsibility in the truest sense Sense of the word radical here, in that no matter what happened, you were able to find a way to justify it as within your control by putting yourself at the center of it. So now when you see people who are operating from a strongly external locus of control, it can feel incredibly frustrating because you have wired your entire worldview around not doing that. But the longer you go through the attachment healing process, the more you're able to recognize that vulnerability, pain, and victimhood are all a part of the human experience and they exist inside of you as well. And when other people are behaving in ways that we do not allow ourselves to access inside of ourselves, we get triggered or frustrated when we see them behaving in that way. Because we have an internal rule about how you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to keep that stuff inside. But the more you're able to access those more vulnerable parts of your own psyche, the less activating it is for you to see other people doing the same. You might still think they're over-exaggerating a little bit. You might still think, I don't agree with their reasoning, but it's not going to hit you on that kind of core anger level the way that it would if you were not aware of your attachment patterning in that area. So your worldview of I'm okay, you're not okay can start to shift a little bit and you can start to recognize that even if you don't agree with other people's pain, that doesn't mean their pain is not real and it doesn't mean their pain is not valid. And actually it has nothing to do with you at all. But just like everything that you feel is valid and real, everything that other people feel is valid and real as well, it just comes from a different place. So this is the beginning of that secure worldview of I'm okay, you're okay, beginning to form. Because at the core of that worldview is the belief that everyone is behaving rationally given the circumstances that they've been through. So if someone is dysregulated, if someone is displaying what you would consider to be excessive vulnerability, it probably makes sense within the worldview and the life experiences that they have had. And that's what it means to have that I'm okay, you're okay worldview. It means that even if someone is quite literally not okay emotionally, you're able to understand the reason behind it rather than writing it off as completely logical because it's not the way that you would do it. Okay, that's all I have to say for today on the early signs that you are starting to heal from the avoidant attachment style. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Once again, this is a short video, so it is far from comprehensive, and we will go much more into what it takes to start healing from this attachment style, as well as some later stage signs that the healing is happening. But for now, I just wanted to give you a brief preview of what it's going to start to look like as you begin to walk down this path. All right, until next time, I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourself and each other, and I will see you back here again really soon.